Hey, but this is Oceans Church. My name is Joel, if we haven't met yet. I'm one of the pastors on staff here. My wife and I, we moved down from Idaho with Pastor Mark and Pastor Rochelle six years ago. Uh, I, I grew, up, grew up in their youth ministry. They haven't been able to get rid of me since. So I'm just excited to be here. There's no other place I'd rather be on a Sunday morning than hanging out in a parking lot with all my closest friends. Amen. 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 Well, uh, today, uh, uh, what we're going to do is uh, uh, I'm going to talk for a little bit. We're going to sing some songs at the end. And I do believe that God is going to speak to you. He's going to unlock something uh, uh, new and fresh inside of you. If this is your first time hanging out with us, uh, uh, last thing I'll say is this is, hey, next week, Pastor Mark, Pastor Rochelle, they will be back. So if, if you're checking it out for the first time, I promise you come back next week. Uh, they'll be here. It's going to be awesome. Uh, uh, and Amen. Amen. I'm in a good mood today. It's Cinco de Mayo. So I'm feeling a little spicier than usual. That's not true. I'm like the opposite of ethnic. I don't know if you guys saw me in worship. I was putting sunscreen on the back of my head because I knew this white LED wall was going to be here. I was a little worried. Ten years ago, I married into a Hispanic family, so... In honor of Cinco de Mayo, today you can call me Pastor Joel. That's okay. I don't eat spicy. It's not me. I married spicy, so I don't have to eat it, right? That's, that's, that's my wife's family. Praise God. It's going to be a great, great day. Before we get started, I just want to say just a big, a big shout out, uh, just a gigantic thank you to even uh, our incredible pastors, Pastor Mark and Pastor Rochelle. Now, here's the thing is uh, I've been with them for a long time. And it's one thing to honor someone when they're sitting in the front row in front of you. It's another thing to, you know, true honor is how you talk about someone when they're not around. Now, I can say this to you guys, man. I've known them in every season of life, before they were married. I've known them before they were senior pastors, before they were parents, after they were parents. Like, all, all of these different seasons. And they have been, in the last 22 years of my life, the most consistent people that I have ever been around. I promise you this, outside of Jesus Christ and my parents birthing me, I would not be here today if it wasn't for Pastor Mark and Pastor Rochelle. So I just think it would be appropriate to give them a big hand clap. Hey, because really none of us would be here if they didn't honor the voice of God and step out in obedience. We love our pastor so much. Hey, make sure at some point this week, maybe text them, post on their, post a comment on their Instagram. Just tell them how much you love them. Amen. Amen. We love, we love our pastors. We've been in an awesome series the last couple of weeks that Pastor Mark's been taking us through called The Reward. Remember a few weeks ago, we talked about the reward of the cross. Last week, we talked about the reward of friendship. And today, I want to talk about the reward of the promised land. And I want to bring you into a thought of how do we have courage? How do we have strength when we're in the middle of the journey from when God promised us to the fulfilled promise. Most of us find ourselves somewhere here in the middle. And you would think to yourself, this journey feels long. This journey is tiresome. Sometimes this journey is not as fun as it was before, right? But how do we have this courage? How do we have this gratitude? How do we have thanksgiving for a promise that we haven't even seen yet? I want to talk to you a little bit about that today. I do feel like, like me and Omar were saying, it's trust and obedience to God. Before you see the promise is what's going to give you access into the promised land. Can I pray for you? God, I pray you'd speak to us today. God, again, open up our ears. I love that your scripture says that you have a still, small voice. So God, I pray you would block out distractions. God, you would block out situations and circumstance that your voice would pierce through the cares of the weak, the worries of the world, and that we would feel your tangible presence King Jesus, we love you, and we honor you. Come on, and somebody said a good amen. Amen, amen. amen. Hey, today I want to read to you a story out of the book of Joshua. Now, Joshua is the guy who took over after the guy. The guy was Moses. Moses leads the children out of Egypt. He takes them to the wilderness, ushers in their new freedom. And in Joshua chapter 1, it says, and then Moses died, and then Joshua took over. He was, he was one of his, his guys, his right-hand guy. And so we're going to pick up a story, a real powerful story, out of the book of Joshua about a miracle that God has promised them and what the children of Israel are about 
to see with their own eyes and what they're about to receive. Now, Joshua, at this point, he's leading the children. They've entered into the promised land. And then God asks them to continue moving through the promised land, and they encounter a place called Jericho. You guys remember that story? Okay, so this is right before Jericho, before they can get to where they need to go, before they go into the best part of the land, they come across the, the, the Jordan River. It's an obstacle between where they're at and where God wants them to go. I think it's funny, this is a side note, that God gave them the promised land, and in their promised land, they seem to run into obstacles that are keeping them from where God wants them to go. Have you ever felt that in your own life, that you are in going in a direction god has promised you something you have big dreams big goals big vision god i feel like i obeyed you and then my life got a little bit harder i feel like i'm walking out in what you want me to do and there seems to be there's this river there's this wall there's this obstacle i promise you this god knows about the river god knows about the obstacle if he called you to get through it he's going to be the one that walks with you amen amen Remember in this, in this story, Moses leads the children out of Egypt, and they're in the wilderness for 40 years. For 40 years. To get to the next part of their journey, they had to go through the Red Sea. Do you guys remember this part of the story? Come on, we watched The Prince of Egypt. We watched The Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. Come on, the movies are good, but the book's better. I like the book better. Um, they go through the Red Sea, and so you have to put yourself in this group right now. That was 40 years ago. 40 years ago, they walked through the Red Sea. So this is a new generation. They were much, much younger when that happened. Many of them have been living their whole lives, decade after decade, hearing these incredible stories from mom and dad, from grandma and grandpa, about how they walked through the Red Sea. But they didn't know that they were actually about to witness a similar miracle themselves. They had heard stories of God's miracles, but they were about to witness one themselves. In Joshua chapter 3, before I get to our text, God gives them direction on where to go. He says, you're going to go through here, and you're going to go through the Jordan River. He actually tells them that as soon as you step into the Jordan River, he says, get the priests, get the ark, step into the river. As soon as you step into the river, he says that I will stop the flow of water, create a wall, and give you an opportunity to walk through it on dry land. Now, this is a unique miracle to this generation because before, Moses walked in and the whole land was dry before the children had to step in. Now, God's saying, I want you to step in first. I want you to trust me. I want you to walk into the water. It says, when you step into the water, the water shall be cut off. God told them to walk and to step into, to step into this obstacle. Now, the children of Israel, they're a lot like us sometimes. Whenever I read stories about them, I just laugh because I think, how did you forget? How do you not remember? But we're the same way. We have amnesia about the goodness of God. He comes through last week, and then we're like, God, where are you? You wake up this morning with breath in your lungs. You're like, God, you don't even take care of me. Like, I'm alive. My goodness. The clothes on my back, that's provision. The vehicle that I took to get here, that's God coming through in every way. We are blessed. We are blessed. Amen. Amen. So I say all that to say, now we're going to dive right into the story. God actually has a plan for the children of Israel that he's setting up to say, hey, this time you're not going to forget about the miracles and the signs and wonders that I've walked you through. We're going to pick up the story in Joshua chapter four. You guys still tracking? It says this in verse four, then Joshua called the 12 men who he had appointed from the children of Israel, one man from every tribe. And Joshua said to them, cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan. Each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask in time to come, saying, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the Lord. When we crossed over the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. To the children of Israel forever. These stones, these stones. My title for you today, if you're taking notes, is simply this. Stacking stones. 
stacking stones. Come on, someone say stacking stones. Stacking stones. They built a memorial to remember how good God was. Now, these rocks, they had to have been big, right? Because I picked up a rock before. But a rock this big isn't going to outlast me. My grandkids are not going to find out about a pile of rocks this big, right? These must have been big, big boulders, big stones. They had to build this monument that was going to outlast them. I think it's funny sometimes the things that we do to create memories and to, to create memorials of things that, that we want to remember. Uh, one thing I was thinking about, even first service, this is such, such like a 90s thing, but do you guys remember scrapbooks? Yes. My mom, she was a scrapper, okay? <laughs> she, loved, she loved a good scrapbook. You know, you had to get the pictures, get them developed. You had those perforated scissors. I want the, wa- I want the wavy. I want the waves around my photo of your one-year-old birthday, right? You're not just writing your name. I'm, I'm sticking the, the sticky letters. Like, it's going to spell out your name in these glitter letters. And the book's going to be this thick, but it's going to have four pages on it. It's like a big pop-up book when you open it, right? I thought these scrapbooks, these monuments to my childhood would be a bigger part of my life. They weren't. Um, maybe some people still have them. Maybe some people still do them in my house. Seems like it was just a fad. Now, I'm the firstborn child, so we have tons of scrapbooks of me, uh, born in the early 90s, right? And, and so all these, all these scrapbooks. Uh, but my parents, you know, I have eight brothers and sisters, so I feel like as, as, as the kids went on, the scrapbooks were getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> my youngest brother just has a little thumb drive with some pictures. <laughs> like, ah, we'll look at those later. Scrapbooks, a funny, a funny way that we, that we remember events. I think another, another funny way that we, we choose to remember things is tattoos. <laughs> things that we choose to remember, things that we wish we didn't remember. Yes. My body is my journal. <laughs> These tattoos are my story. <laughs> Your story's confusing. It has plot holes and a twist ending that was unnecessary. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I'm poking fun of myself. Now, I'm not saying that I, you know, I, do, I do have some tattoos. Not that I regret, but let's just say you, there's a reason you've never seen me wearing shorts. <laughs> I'm offending myself before I offend you, okay? There's these funny things that we do to create memories of things that we want that we want to remember forever, right? Yeah. So what they did was they took these big boulders and they stacked stones in such a big pile to where their children and their children's children would remember them. Now, they built physical monuments, a physical memorial to remember what God has done. How do we translate that to today? Well, let me ask you this question. Can we ask ourselves, what are you and I building right now that's a memorial to God's goodness in our life? What are we building right now that our kids are going to ask about? What are we building to remember what God has done? What are the things we're building with our lives, with our actions, with our family, with our business that will tell future generations what God has done? Ask this question. Are you building a legacy? Are you building a legacy of generosity? Are you building a legacy with your kids? Are you building a legacy? I heard a pastor tell me this this week. He said, legacy is better than resume. Here's why. A resume brags about what I have done in my lifetime. A legacy is going to far outlive me. I don't want just a good resume. I want to build a legacy that we can leave behind us in our wake that people can point to and remember God's goodness. Amen? So how do we build a legacy? How do we stack stones. How do we stack stones? Well, I'm going to give you four, four points today, four things that, that will help us in that direction. The first thing we need to do, the first step is that we actually just need faith to step out. We need faith to step out. Let's do something with God that's even worth remembering. We need faith to step out. Maybe you feel like you've stepped out. Maybe you feel like even right now, you're in the middle of the journey, and sometimes it's stressful. Sometimes there's pressure. Sometimes it's a little bit scary. I'm in the middle. Maybe you felt like you've stepped out, and you didn't see the miracle. I stepped into the river, 
And all I got was wet socks. It takes faith. It takes faith to be the first Christian in your family. It takes faith to shift your business plan to further the kingdom of God. It takes faith to step up in your industry and declare God's goodness. All I got is a wet sock right now. People are making fun of me. It's uncomfortable. I don't like this. This is not what I was promised. But if you're going to build something that outlasts you, you need a faith to step out. You need a faith to step out. It said this, that in, in, in the previous chapter in Joshua 3, that they wouldn't even see the miracle until they walked into the water. And the reason they put the priests in the ark out first, because it, it says in, in uh, chapter 3, verse 5, it says, you don't know the way. God said, I'm going to take you a way that you haven't been before. So in order for you to get there, you need my presence to go before you. God, if you're asking me to go, I'm going to go. If you're asking me to move there, I'm going to move. If you're asking me to build this, I'm going to build. You're asking me to create this legacy, God, I'll do it. It doesn't make sense right now. It's uncomfortable. I'm getting ridiculed. I'm being pushed from all sides. But God, I believe you and I trust you. You need faith to step out. Amen? The second thing we need to do if we're going to stack stones, if we're going to believe for the reward of the promised land, is we need strength to carry. So we need a faith to step out. And number two, we need strength to carry. It says that they had strength to lift up these boulders and put them on their shoulder. But how do you get strong shoulders? How do you get strength that says, hey, even in the middle of the journey, in the middle of the river, take some time to look down and, and pick up these big rocks. Well, if we ask ourselves the question, how do we get strength, why don't we turn to Scripture? Let's reverse engineer strength, shall we? It says in Nehemiah 8.10 that the joy of the Lord is my Come on, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Psalm 16 says, you make known to me the paths of life, and in your presence is the fullness of? Okay, so if I'm in his presence, and I get joy, and in joy is the fullness of strength, if I need strength, I got to get into his presence. Man, how do you get into God's presence? Well, you get into moments like, we, like we've been having today. Man, there's something special about when people like Bodie and Lauren and Pastor David start singing and you feel hope, courage. You feel strength. You feel joy. It's the presence of Jesus. But I want to let you know that the presence of Jesus is not just reserved for 25 minutes on a Sunday morning. It's available for you anytime you call on him. I think some of us, come on, you need to turn your Honda into a holy place. Turn your Tesla into a temple of God. Throw on some oceans music and cry out and say, God, I need strength and joy. I need to be in your presence. It's in his presence that we find these answers. In his presence that we find the strength. Maybe you're right in the middle of the journey and you haven't made it through the waters yet. I had this revelation reading this story that the memorial that they built, I just always assumed that I obey God, he creates the miracle, and then I thank him for it. I obey God, he performs the miracle, and then I can build a memorial to remember him by. I obey God, he comes through for me, then I'm going to tell everyone how good he is. Can I remind you what we read here? It said in Joshua 4 that when they got into the water, it says, before you've crossed over, take 12 guys with you and get into the river and grab some stones. Let me walk you through this. They're at the beginning of the river. Their promise is on the other side. They didn't get the rocks to thank God when they made it to the promise. They picked up the rocks in the middle of the journey, in the middle of the water, when they hadn't seen the fulfillment of the promise yet. I mean, some of us, my goodness, we've been waiting for God to heal us before we build a monument that he's our healer. We've been waiting for God to come through financially before we build the monument that he's the provider. We've been waiting for the breakthrough before we give him credit for the breakthrough. And God is telling us to pick up these stones. Man, what do you do when you step out and you haven't seen the reward? You pick up a stone. 
What do you do when you haven't seen the miracle yet? You pick up a stone. What do you do when the doctor says it's cancer? When the pregnancy test still says negative? When the finances haven't come through? When the prayers haven't been answered? When the prodigals haven't come home yet? You pick up a stone. Because I'm going to carry this thing because I know God not only can come through, he will come through. You need a strength to carry. Man, are you believing God for a promise? Are you believing him for breakthrough? Are you believing him for healing? You got to pick up the stones in the middle of the journey. That's what great faith is. Man, I'm pre-planning a praise party before I see this miracle. I got all the supplies. I got this big heavy rock. We're going to party like God's already done it. Man, I, I, I know there's, there's people in here, maybe you're in a season of life where, man, I don't, if, if, if God has been in my life, I don't find it evident. I've had hard times, hard seasons, hard months, hard years. I've been confused, distracted, dismayed. I've been sick. I've been broken. I want to let you know that scripture says God has never left you, that he has never forsaken you. That he's the friend that sticks closer than your closest sibling. That he's the one who's going to lead you and guide you. That he is here to tell you, I have a good and perfect plan. I did not abandon you. I'm here to pull you up out on the mud and give you a pathway forward. What he's asking us to do is to trust him and to partner with him. And I think many of us have felt this crushing burden or this weight because we've been trying to do it in our own strength. Man, I'm done using Joel's strength. I want Jesus' strength. I'm done using my own intellect. I want some Holy Spirit wisdom. I'm done trying to figure it out on my own because I'm not strong enough to pick up this rock. I need the strength to carry and build a monument that gives God glory and gives him credit in the middle of my journey. Amen? Amen. Amen. We got to pick up those stones. Number three, I want to remind you, That as you're picking up rocks, as you're picking up stones, you don't got to do it alone. That not only do you need faith to step out, not only will you get strength to carry, but God will provide a team to help. A team to help. A team going through what you're going through. A team going in the same direction. This is why small groups are so important. This is why stopping by that prayer booth on the way out before you get to your car is so important. Saying, hey, I need some help. You know what I'm grateful for? Okay? Because, you know, for, for me, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm an achiever. I'm a goals guy. I'm, I'm a worker. I like getting things done. But for me, if, if God had asked me to build a memorial, I think sometimes what I would do is I'd walk into the river. I'd grab one stone. I'd get out of the river. I'd set it down. I'd go back, pick up another one. I'd get it out, set it down. And then I'd be complaining about how tired I am, how sore my shoulders are, how weak I feel. But God is not asking you to do life alone. I'm grateful that he said, hey, get 12 guys to go with you. And when they walked into the river in the middle of the journey, I'm just responsible for this rock. And I got people on my left and on my right who are going to pick up the other boulders. And together, as we go in the same direction, we're going to build something that glorifies God. We don't have to do it alone. Man, that's the key for some of you in here. You feel alone. God wants to bring a team around you. God wants to say, I'm always with you. God wants to say, you got people who care about you. I remember when I really got my life right with God and I I left my old life. I felt like I had really no friends, no one who really kind of understood this new direction of life. You know, some, some family members don't understand it. Some friends don't understand it. Sometimes I didn't even understand it. God, what am I doing right now? (laughs) Feels a little lonely. God, I feel like I invited you into my life and it got lonely. Can we be honest? This is not everyone. Does that ever happen to anybody before? God, I feel like I've been more obedient than I ever have been. And I feel lonely. The Holy Spirit wanted to remind you that you might be alone, but you don't ever have to be lonely. He's always with you. I remember praying a prayer in a church service. I never prayed a prayer like this before. I didn't know you could pray prayers like this. 
I just felt alone. I prayed. I said, God, could you bring me some best friends? Some people who who are going where I want to go. Because I don't need a club. I don't need a... uh, I want people who love Jesus even more than I love Jesus. I want people who want to answer the phone call when I did something stupid. I want people who have a great marriage that I can emulate. I don't want to do this alone. I remember praying that prayer, and God brought three guys into my life. All three of them were groomsmen of my wedding. One of them's here on the front row, Dan Dunson. We're still, we're still to get running together. God can answer a prayer that he can bring a team around you. Say, hey, you don't, you don't got to pick up all 12 of those things. Let me get one of those. And that looks heavy. Let me grab one of these. And God will give you a team to do it together. Amen? Amen. Number four, and this is so important. So for many of us, we need to reflect on God's goodness and we need to repeat the story. You got to repeat the story. Stories over and over and over again. And the children of Israel, they built a monument so that they could repeat the story. Hey, what does that mean to you? Oh, let me tell you about the time we crossed through the Jordan into the promised land. Hey, Dad, what's this big pile of rocks here? Oh, let me tell you a crazy story about God's goodness. Let me tell you a crazy story about a miracle. I mean, Dad, what, is it, what do these rocks mean? Well, when, when I was young, we were believing for something big, and God showed up. God made a way. You know, you're sitting here this morning, you're in these, you're in these tents. This is a really unique, this is a unique church. It's, we just love parking lots. <laughs> but I remember having a moment uh, where, where I got one of these stories that, that I had to repeat to myself over and over and over again. About four and a half years ago, it was early 2020, uh, our, whole, our whole church was located at our San Juan campus. And uh, I remember we were, we were in a staff meeting. We're celebrating like, man, we had like 300 people on Sunday. This is amazing. This is incredible. It's a move of God. And we were like, we were already kind of planning and dreaming about how to create more space and, and different things like that. Maybe we should, what if we put a tent in the parking lot? What a funny idea. And then, of course, 2020, a lot of things happened. And, and so we, we moved outside. I remember our first, our first Sunday and the tents. We, we put this tent out. Uh, we thought it was the biggest tent I've ever seen in my life. It wasn't that big. It was probably from about, about here to that row of cameras right there. And 400 people showed up. So then the next week, we, we had to get another tent. And we put it on the side. It was blue. Pastor Mark called it our Coachella tent for like six weeks. It's all we could get. We have a blue tent now. And then that one filled up. We put a third. And then we put a fourth. And it was this like hodgepodge of a puzzle piece of a tent. Now, what, what some of you may not, may not know or may not realize is, I mean, this, this whole thing, this is an operation. There's an army of incredible volunteers that I would invite you to that shows up on Saturday mornings. It sets up all these chairs. They're wiring all these cables. They're setting up cameras and televisions, plugging in all the sound system. And back then, because of our, our property we were at, after church on, so we'd set all up Saturday. After church Sunday, we'd take everything out. We would hand roll this turf. Never in my life had I weighed turf before. I have no concept on, of how much turf weighs. It's about 10,000 pounds. And this is not like some, you know, old man story. Hey, back in my day, it was harder. That's not what I'm saying, but just walk with me for a second. We'd have to roll up the turf haul it out of there and then they would come and tear down all the tents because it had to be a parking lot by Monday morning we did this every single week so after a couple months of this nonsense I started to have a bad attitude now no one here has ever had a bad attitude about doing what God has asked them to do so try to put yourself imagine a little bit what it would feel like tired. I want to shower. I don't ever want to see green turf again. More coffee in my system than water. I'm like, ah. So I was sitting in the back and um, 
was sitting in the back of the sound booth and it was a powerful service. It was just the power of God was there. Pastor Mark's on stage and he's like, man, there's a spirit of freedom here. And it was this really special Sunday. We, we grabbed a bunch of trash cans and we lined them up in front of the stage. And he said, if you want, to, if you want freedom, I want you to dump into this trash can anything that's holding you, holding you bondage. A couple of you were there. You guys remember the service? And I saw people, they're running out to their cars to grab substances and, and things. Um, you know, people are writing on notes like this is what I'm struggling with and just dropping it. Powerful service. And I'm sitting in the back watching all this happen and God checked my, my nasty attitude. And he said, this is why we're setting up. This is why that rock's so heavy. And I just remember repenting. I said, God, I'll do, I'll do it again next week. I'll do it. I'll do it for the next four and a half years at least. <laughs> but do you know what's so powerful? Even more powerful than the revelation I got, I have told that story hundreds of times. It's a reminder for me. I don't tell it just to change somebody else's mind. Hey, this is why you should serve because God's moving. I remind myself. This is why we do what we do. This is why we pray. This is why we serve. One day we're gonna have a beautiful facility. We'll have massive theaters. I'll have a sweet office. But I promise you this, I'm, there'll be a, a square of this tent on a frame in my office. As people are sitting down, we're chatting, they're gonna look at that picture and say, what's that, what's that tarp? What does that mean to you? And I'll be able to tell them, oh, that? Yeah, that's heavy. Let me tell you about a move of God in Irvine. Let me tell you about the birth of a baptism movement. Let me tell you about freedom that people have experienced. Let me tell you about marriages restored. Let me tell you about healings. Let me tell you about restoration. Let me tell you about revival. Come on, this is not a man-made movement. This is God-breathed. Why don't you all stand to your feet and give God some praise? Give God praise. Stay standing. Come on, everybody, all over the, all over the tent, stand to your feet. I promise you this, there's power in your story. And before you get a platform, God wants you to share it. Man, I don't need a stage to grab someone in a grocery store and say, hey man, God loves you. I got proof, let me tell you what he's done in my life. Man, I love, there's a quote that I love. It says this, preach the gospel every single day. And if you have to, use your words. I think the way you live your life, the way you raise your kids, the way you run your business, the way you love on people, the way you serve and you work and you give should be a reflection. It should be a big pile of rocks that tells of God's goodness. You got to tell your story. Man, so write that book. Start the podcast, right? tell someone about God's goodness. Because your story's too important to keep it to yourself. And dad, what does that pile of rocks mean to you? Well, I remember when I was lost, when I was far from God. And he met me right where I was at. I didn't need to clean my life up before he accepted me in. He said, I love you regardless. And he gave me a plan and a purpose and vision and pictures. That's why we built this thing, this big pile of stones. So I'm never going to forget how God has come through, how he's currently coming through, and how he will continue his everlasting faithfulness. I think there's many people here. What I'm talking about today gives language to what even you're feeling. That I feel like I'm, I'm walking in the middle of this journey 
And all I got to show for it is knee-high water. In the middle of the river, God, you said, I can't go any deeper. We're gonna get swept away. I got a lot of people looking up to me, following me this way. You said, just step out and I'll show you a miracle. You promised that you would heal me. The doctors say it's just getting worse. You promised you'd take care of my family. You promised you were gonna come through. You gave me the picture, you gave me the vision. I can see it in my mind, I just don't see it with my eyes. God would say, I'm with you in the journey. And what do you do when, when the doctor calls you? Okay, I'm on the phone, yeah, I'm gonna pick up that rock. And hey, we're not there yet, but we're gonna get there. I don't gotta do it alone. I'm gonna call my small group, I'm gonna call my friends, I'm gonna call people who are praying for me. And what do you do when the pressures of life are bombarding you from all around? You know what I do when people throw rocks at me? I pick up that rock. I'm like, I'm gonna build something with this. You throw a rock at me, I'm gonna build something that glorifies God with this. All over the tent. Close your eyes just for a moment. You'd say, that's me. You're putting language to what I'm going through. I'm in the middle of a journey. I'm in the middle of, it could be a hard week. could be a hard, man, some of you, some of you had hard years. God wanted to encourage you today that he's going to keep walking with you to pick up the rock. Don't do it alone. He's going to give you the strength to go forward. He would say, I just, I just need more strength. That's me. Lift your hands. I want strength to go through the journey. I want strength to trust in him. I want strength to know that he's going to get me through it. I want those reminders. I want those scriptures to, to just come over me like waves and waves that remind me of his goodness, remind me of his faithfulness. God, with our hands lifted, I pray everyone who is in need of strength that they would find it in your presence. God, I thank you that it's in your presence we find joy. It's in your presence we find strength. God, I just even pray over this group, Psalms 144. It says, how happy, how joyful are the people whose God is the Lord. God, no longer am I my own Lord. No longer is my bank account my Lord. No longer is my own plan my Lord. No longer is my job or my kids or my spouse. God, it's you. Come on, lift your hands. You need great strength. God, I just thank you for those that are in need of a miracle. A miracle promised is still on the horizon. I'm going to commit to praising you, God, before I even see it. Before my eyes have seen it. Before my hands have held it. God, we praise you. Jesus name I want to say specifically if you're if your journey you feel like the river the, the the waters of the river beating up against you is a health related issue you need healing in your body I want you to lift your hands right now I need healing in my body I feel like God wanted to encourage you and remind you that we're gonna honor God as the healer before we even see the completion of his healing Come on, lift your hands. You need a healing in your body. Now, remember, we don't do this alone. If, if someone's next to you, or if you're next to someone with their hands lifted, just a couple of people, two or three people, just lay your hand on their shoulder. If you need healing, just close your eyes. I'm going to pray for you. But here's the thing. It's not tied just to one person. This is why we, this is why we rally every Sunday. We lay hands on people. It's a reminder that you don't do this alone. I'm going to get that boulder next to you. And that the healing power of God is not reserved for one special person on a platform. It's reserved for the children of God. So even right now, I want you just to pray and just say, God, we release your healing. Pray it again. God, we release your healing. God, I pray John 4.11 over this group that this sickness will not be unto death, but it will be unto the glory of God. 
God, we commit to worshiping you and praising you and calling you our healer, even when the doctors say otherwise, even when the diagnosis is detrimental. God, I thank you that in our praise, that's when walls come down. In our praise, that's when the ocean splits and we can walk on through. In our praise, that's when the jail sh cells shook and the chains came off. God, we commit to praising you right now. God, we thank you for the healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I just want you to thank him right now for the healing. Thank him with your own mouth. You can put your hands down for a moment. God spoke this to me first service. But it's in your left hand specifically. There's like a numbness or like a nerve damage. God spoke it to me and, and he wanted to show himself to you as the healer or even giving you an opportunity to respond today. If that's you, it's, it's in my left hand. There's, there's nerve damage, but I want healing. Wave at me. Well, where are you at? Right here, two. Anyone else? Three. Okay. Anyone else? You three. Keep your hands up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just close your eyes. I want you to lift both hands towards heaven. I saw it from the tip of the left thumb all the way down to the wrist. This is cool. It's almost like you're gonna be driving home today. And this is this is this is weird, forgive me. But when God speaks prophetically, it's just a picture that God's showing me that He wants me to tell you. This is how you're gonna know God's moving. I saw you driving home and you hitting the left blinker of your car and you you almost this is silly if you don't have nerve damage in your hand. This is, someone's gonna scream driving home when this happens. I saw you hitting the blinker of your car and feeling it in your hand. Like, whoa, I haven't, I, hold on a second. I haven't, I haven't felt that, uh, that touch before. I saw it, just start moving your hand, moving your left hand. God, I pray right now. Nerves, we call you into alignment right now. Blood flow, we call you into alignment. Got muscles. Uh, uh, any type of witheredness, any bones, ligaments, tendons. God, we call you into alignment right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we give you all the credit and all the glory. God, I thank you that from this day forward, we're even going to use that as our monument. Hey, let me tell you about a God who healed me. Let me tell you about a God who restored me. Let me tell you about a God who came through. God, I thank you right now. Come on, move your, move your hand. If you feel something different, if that was you, one of the three, you feel something different, just wave at me. For real? Come on, thank God right now. You feel something different right now in your left hand. That's amazing. Can I pray for you? Just put your hands up right now. Just close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for your healing. God, we thank you that you are moving in a mighty way. God, I just even pray. Man, I saw this. I saw God leading you into a new, I'm, I'm not going to be vague. Sometimes I'll say like a new season. No, it's specific. Even like a new, a new month. That this month there's going to be some things that change for you. I saw you leading your family in a way that you hadn't even led before that you're gonna anchor onto the scripture that says, as for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. And there's gonna be people that you've been praying for. I don't know if it's kids or nieces or nephews, but even just people that are near and dear to you that have been far away from God, they're gonna start coming into the house of God. I see them walking into Ocean's Church. I see them walking into other great churches wherever they're at around the country. And it's the overflow of your obedience that's going to be so influential and impactful on them you're going to lead your family in a new way and i saw this it's a story out of nehemiah 13 it's referencing actually the children of israel there have been things spoken against you and your family whether it's it's curses or, or just even dumb things people have said about you that people have tried to lobby against you but in nehemiah 13 it says this it says god took all the curses and turned them into blessings. God, I pray this would be a month of blessings, a month of open doors. Curses be broken. Curses, we cast you out. God, I thank you that you're making a way where there previously was no way. And God, you're doing a mighty work in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Come on, last, last group I want to pray for. Please close your eyes. We're going to pray, and then we're going to be done. 
If you're in here and you know, close your eyes just for a moment, you know God's not offering your story. Man, I can't even repeat a story of God's goodness because I'm not even partnered with him. I promise you this, God knows right where you're at. This is not like a New Year's resolution, like, okay, when I clean up a little bit, then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna get right. Man, I'm, I'm, when I get sober for 30 days, then I'm gonna start going to church. Nah, God can handle you right now. This may be bad theology, but roll with me a little bit. God's a big boy. He can handle a little dysfunction. He can handle wherever you're at right now. He's the God who breaks addictions. He's the God who breaks old mindsets. He's the God that stops generational curses. He's the God that kills giants in your family. He's the one that makes a way where there was no way. So close your eyes all over the room. There's people here you have never made a decision to serve God. There are other people here, your story's like mine. I grew up in a Christian household. I knew what to say. You asked me how I was doing, I'd say, doing good brother bless God praise the Lord hallelujah he's good in my life but then I'm staying the night at my girlfriend's house the next night I'm doing crazy things on Tuesday I'm living jacked up on Wednesday and I'm in church on Sunday just going through the motions but God got a hold of me and my relationship with God flipped because it was no longer mom and dad's God I had my own relationship so if that's you with every eye closed come on this is a special moment special moment close your eyes even many of you watching online right now, you're, you're in on this. You're going to participate too. You say, I'm not serving Jesus, but today I want to make a decision that from this day forward, he's going to author my story. Or maybe you grew up serving him, but you've walked away, but you know now's the time to come home. God, we ask that you would prepare our hearts. you get us ready. If that's you... On the count of three, I want you to lift your hands. If you're watching online right now, I want you to write the word heart so we know we can pray for you. Heart, H-E-A-R-T, or you can drop the heart emoji on there if you're watching on Facebook or on our website or on YouTube. Just type heart. We have a team online that wants to pray for you and celebrate you. But if that's you, I wanna give my life to Jesus. On the count of three, I want you to lift your hands. Come on, one, two, three. Lift your hands. I want to know who I'm praying for. Say, that's me, that's me. One, two, thank you. Three, four, thank you. Come on, lift them high. Five, thank you very much. Come on, lift them high. Five, five, six, thank you. Seven, I see you. Come on, give God a good hand clap. Anybody else over here? I see seven hands. Eight, thank you very much. Nine, thank you. Ten, I see you behind the TV over there. Come on, give God a good hand clap. 11, thank you so much. Thank you, King Jesus. Come on, if you're watching online, you just write heart, H-E-A-R-T. Osis Church, with all 11 of these people and many, many more online, could you pray this prayer with me? Say, dear Jesus, I ask you into my life. I pray that you would change me from the inside out. And I pray that from this day forward, you would author my story. I love you and I trust you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Come on, give God a good hand clap this morning.